God, I remember the days that I hated when the weekends were ending because I hated Mondays. But since I started trading, that has completely changed. Completely. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And today is Monday. It's October 21st. Now, we're going to do the same thing we always do on this show. We're going to focus in on a hot penny stock. One I found through the day as I was trading stocks under five bucks. And I do this every day because I'm a day trader. And when I'm looking for stocks under five bucks, I'm looking for a particular type, a hot penny stock, one that has a hot chart and has hot news. That's what I call a hot penny stock. And with that in mind, we're looking at ticker BSFC, Blue Star Foods Corporation. Now, I did find this stock by looking at the charts. She caught my attention on the four hour because she has got an atypical breakout right now. Got that 200-day SMA coming down fast and furious, price up underneath it. Then all of a sudden, the 200 starts to level off, gets its pressure off of the price so it can go level, and then it starts to climb and cuts through that 200, and you get yourself a breakout. That's what we got going on here. But what really caught my attention is she has been in a downtrend for a real long time. But in that downtrend, she was getting these big spikes over and over again, popping up over the 200 and coming down. And we're talking 100, 200, 300% pops as she's falling. So I'm thinking once she levels off and starts to break out, we could see those same sort of bounces climbing up. And catalysts, we got a whole bunch of little catalysts here, which should get our fire burning hot. So Blue Star Foods, she finished today at 65 cents and she was up 30% today. Now, this is a hot penny stock in the major exchange, which comes with benefits over the OTC penny stocks. First off, all of your transactions are free. Never have to pay to get in or get out. You can trade pre-market, after-market. Lots of money-making opportunities there, and you can never do it with OTC. There's a lot more volume and a lot more money up on the major exchange. Just makes sense to go to an amusement park that has a lot of rides. (laughs) And last but not least, they've also got a lot of rules up there which is great. All of that extra oversight is like for our investments. That's keeping us safe. So yeah, I do like trading major exchange penny stocks. So what is BSFC all about? Well, they are a aquacultural system company. They grow their own seafood indoors in these big tubs. They have two types, salmon and crab. They tell us here they are based in Little Cedar Falls, Washington. That's where their operations are at, but their offices are headquartered in Florida, from one corner to the other. They tell us here that this land-based salmon production is operating the oldest, continuously operating, recirculating aquacultural system, raising salmon from egg to plate in North America. As pioneers in land-based salmon production, We have proven our technology in a model farm module designed to grow 100 tons of steelhead salmon per year. And you get an idea here looking at the pictures. This is what they're growing in. It's like a greenhouse, so it's all controlled. You got your environment protected. They're growing in the waters that are being cleaned up. And they are also selling crab. Now, they don't give us any pictures of them growing crab, but they are selling this, as far as I can see, only in pieces. Now, maybe they sell full crabs too, but they have big chunks, they have medium-sized chunks, little chunks, and then they shred the heck out of it. So they got a whole product line of products that they are selling out there. So let's take a look at the news and see what's going on with this company. We've got news going back here to mid-August, and I do want to touch on to each one of these headlines because they are each good news and important, and then we want to take a look at these top two. August 15th. Blue Star Foods reports 14% revenue growth to 4 million, highlighting a 27% increase in gross profit in the first half of 2024. So the first six months, the business is growing. They're already up 27%. Then one day later, Blue Star Foods submits request for withdrawal registration statement on Form S1. Now, normally this is about shares being put on the market one way or another, and it's going to increase the float. It's going to increase the outstanding share count. It's going to reduce our shareholder value. So normally when these come out and they say we've canceled it, you normally see a run on the stock because people are real excited that they're not going to get burned, not even a little. Four days later, 
The company strengthens their balance sheet by paying off $645,000 worth of debt. That's great. Out of the way. Blue Star Foods reiterates 2024 forecast of at least 65% revenue growth. Wow, we've jumped from 27% now up to 65%. And then up here, they tell us that they are at an annual run rate of greater than $20 million. So business is growing, profits are growing, they're getting busier and busier. That is all great to hear. Then we've got two pieces of news here I do want to dive into. This first one came out October 10th. Blue Star Foods, Taste of BC Aqua Farms, signs fingerling supply agreement with Miracle Springs, posed for accelerated growth, major milestone to meet increasing market demand. Blue Star Foods, the company, executed a significant agreement with Miracle Springs to supply a substantial quantity of fingerlings. I'm guessing that's a type of fish, you know, a certain size. This partnership represents a major milestone, enabling Taste of BC to accelerate its harvest growth and meet increasing market demand. Now, I find this next part interesting. Under this innovative agreement, Miracle Springs will supply, subject to permits, 1.2 thousand kilograms of fish consisting of 750 kilograms of smaller packages of fingerlings. These strategic quantities will save between two to five months in our growth cycle per respective lot. Now, you can't grow salmon any quicker than they grow. I mean, there's no way to produce faster fish. So I'm thinking they're harvesting them earlier and getting smaller pieces out of them. That's the only thing I can figure at this point in time. This contract is valued at approximately 200,000 Canadian dollars and is set to increase taste of BC's production capability up to 200 tons of hog steelhead salmon in 2025 and 2026. This boost equates to an impressive $2.3 million Canadian dollars in projected revenues. The company is upgrading key farm systems to support additional biomass with farm water quality in mind by enhancing both our oxygen and ozone capacities with less dependence on liquid oxygen. We are targeting a 40% reduction of our locks, our liquid oxygen. Now, I don't know how much that is, but we're cutting out expenses. We're cutting debt. We are making our finances better. And speaking of finances, our last piece of news here came out October 14th. This is a shareholder letter from the CEO, and it was spurred on because of some bad things that are happening. They are suing somebody for libel. Now, let's start where we should. This company, Blue Star Foods, purchased Taste of BC Aqua Farms back in 2021. They acquired this company but they are still leasing the land from the previous owner of that company. Well, the previous owner is upset with them for some reason. And because he's upset, his son, who was left behind as the president of the new company, they state has orchestrated malevolent and willful management negligence while at the helm of Taste of BC, his employment was terminated February 2024. They tell us that he has formally been accused of interfering with the functions of Taste of BC. Employees have reported numerous instances of harassment, undermining their ability to perform their duties. In particular, concerning there is evidence with CCTV recordings of trespassing and property vandalization attributed to this guy. So this is something that they are in the works of. But one of the things was the previous owner started making accusations that the company had huge amounts of debt and was taking on more and more debt. And that's really what he wrote this news press about. Blue Star Foods Corporation remains committed to transparency and integrity. As to the alleged increase in debt levels, Blue Star Liabilities Quarter ending June 30th of this year, versus the same period last year, shows a 50% reduction in total liabilities, strengthening its balance sheet by $4.6 million in shareholder equity. 
shareholder equity. This got swung over to us, as you're going to see when we go look at the finances. So we just saw news of them paying debt. We see that they are cutting expenses. The locks is being cut down. They just told us year over year they've cut down expenses. So no, they're not in any trouble financially. Things are actually getting better and better for them. So they've got something going on here. It isn't bad, but it's drawing attention to the company, which I think is going to be a good thing. So let's take a look. Oh, no, before we go anywhere, I got one more piece of news, which I almost forgot about because they don't have any news about it here, except back here in April of 2023. Now, just to make sure it was still good, I looked around and yes, they are still in business with this company. Blue Star Foods ramps up shipments to Just Food for Dogs. This company, Just Food for Dogs, makes special dog food. They use chicken, they use fish, they use all sorts of produce, and they create this special type of food for dogs. And this company got a contract with them. It was a $4 million contract, they tell us, and they were expected to supply 2.5 million pounds of cod. So maybe they grow cod as well. I didn't know that they grew cod, but this product is on the market. It is being sold in a lot of different places, and I didn't see anything anywhere that said this deal was off the table. Now, maybe it's over, maybe it is, but I'm just letting you know this was the last piece of news that I found. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Anything going on over here? Oh, heck yeah. We've got like 10 times her normal volume, going from roughly 700,000 shares a day over the last 30 days to over 7.3 million shares today. Share structure for Blue Star. Hey, look at this, folks. We have a very, very low float. Outstanding share count is only 2.5 million. That is all the shares on the market, including what the insiders own. I don't know how much that is, but subtract with the insider zone from the total number, we're going <laughs> to back up, boy. We are going to have a super duper low float. And when this stock moves shares like it did today, 7 million, and you've only got 2.5 million, that means every share had to sell about three times over today. And that's probably why we're getting these two, 300% bounces, even when she was falling, because she's got a super duper low float. Market cap for the company is going to be very low as well. Market cap is only 1.2 million. You figure that out by taking the price and multiplying it with all the outstanding shares. That's how you get it. And there it is, 1.2. Financials. How is the company doing? Don't forget, we got to add three zeros behind any of the numbers on the charts. And they've been falling drastically over the last four years from 14 million down to 6 million. And their profits obviously have been falling with them. E gads. Quarterly, um, they're bouncing between 1 million and 2.2 million every quarter. There's some jumps in there. Sometimes they're making profits, sometimes they're not. The last quarter we were at 1.7 and we did get a little bit of money out of that, $300,000. Looking at the balance sheet, three zeros have to come over here as well. Thank goodness. What do we got in the bank? $73,000. Total assets is 8.1 million. Total liabilities, about three and a half million. So we've got positive stockholder equity, right? They said it was 4.6. There it is, 4.6 million. And what stands out here is over the last four years, you can see our stockholder equity has been growing. So for us, things have been getting better for the company. Their revenues have been falling, but our stockholder equity has been going up. Now, if you want to figure out a base price for what this stock could be, take the shares, what was it, 2.6 million, something like that, and divide that into our equity, 4.6 million. That will give you a price based on assets. So we're looking at over a dollar, right? A dollar 30, something like that. And that's the other thing we have to consider, right? What about that price? That price is under a dollar. And being on the major exchange, you can't be under a dollar too long or they'll kick you off the major exchange down to the OTC. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because there is a filing that covers this and it's the only filing we really need to look at. 
All right, you can't see it all. So I'm going to try to hold this up with my finger. The NASDAQ has reached out to the company and told them that their price has been under a dollar for more than 30 days. That was it, 30 days, sorry. <laughs> and they tell us here that this is a matter that can get him kicked off of the NASDAQ and thrown down to the OTC. Now it gets a little complicated here. The company is subject to a mandatory panel monitoring for a period of one year or until June 11th, 2025. As such, the company is not eligible for a compliance period. Uh-oh. Normally, you get six months to get the price back up over a dollar. Not that they can do anything. It's up to us, the investors. We got to bid that price over a dollar. And if we don't do it for 10 consecutive days, keep that price over a dollar, the stock either has a reverse stock split or it gets thrown down to the OTC. But they don't get a compliance period because they're being monitoring. So what's up? Well, they tell us here that the company has an opportunity to request a hearing with the hearings panel of NASDAQ by October 23rd. They did it. They put in their filing, their appeal, October 18th. Now, while this is sitting there, they haven't got their hearing yet, but it's in the queue. While it's in the queue, nothing can happen to the company. There is a stay of execution, if you will. We're in a freeze frame right now. The other thing I found very interesting here that I was unaware of is that it cost them $20,000 for this hearing. So when they put in the filing, they had to give $20,000 as well to be heard. Whether the answer is yes or no, that money is gone. They ain't getting that back. So whenever we see a company that has the right to appeal and they don't appeal, maybe it's because of that $20,000. Very well could be. So the company isn't looking too bad, actually. Their revenues have dropped a lot. I agree with that. But the stockholder equity has come up. They've cut a deal with another company. Things are building up right now. And as day traders, we're not going to be in this company for very long. We're in it because it's got a hot chart and we've got catalysts to move it up. Attention is being drawn to the company. Volume is just coming in right now and things look good. But don't take my word for it. Let's go look at the chart. Now we get to do my favorite part of due diligence, the charting. <laughs> the heck with those press releases and filings. That is so boring. I like to play with charts. So welcome to my playground. This is my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. So we're taking a look at ticker BSFC, Blue Star Foods. Got her opened up to a six-month, four-hour view. And as you can see, she's been in a downtrend this entire time, having a high about five months ago of $8.95 and hitting a low here of 43 cents at the beginning of this month. Now, even though she's been in a downtrend, she's been treating us pretty nice. She's been giving us many opportunities to take money from her. This one back here, this jump from $4.50 up to $9.00. That's a 100% run right there. This one jumped from $4 to $8, another 100%. This one was super juicy, going from about $260 up to $730. $250, 300% gains. And then these two, one was just over 100% and one is just at 100%. Now, what's really interesting is taking notice of the volume. Let me zoom in here so you can see if there's any volume. This is my volume bar down here. Look at this one. We have no volume showing up here whatsoever. That one here, we got one itty bitty bar. That jump, 300%, we've got a couple of small bars. Our 100% jumps have some bigger volume. My point is she doesn't need a lot of volume to get these huge jumps. So imagine what's going to happen when volume does come in and she breaks out. Right now, she is in a breakout setup, ready to get up on top of that 200 with that small float. We could see those sort of big jumps as she's climbing. This could be a huge runner, folks. Now, as you can see, she is perfectly set up as an atypical breakout. We've got our 200-day MA on the top. Price is right here underneath it with our other 200 underneath the price. We've got a 200 sandwich here. One of my favorite setups, 200 MA on the top and the friendly 200 haul underneath. This is ready for a slap 
move. <laughs> what is that? All right, this 200 and that 200, they're related. They have the same authority, the same power. The difference between the two, both of them take 200 days of prices and average them together. And that gives us a point on the chart. But the 200 haul does something a little different. It takes current prices into consideration, which means it relates to the price. It's actually got a relationship with the price and you see it help the price on many occasions. And right in this situation is where I see it happen a lot. When the price is between both 200s, when this bottom 200 starts turning up and I have mine in two different colors, so I know when it's turning up in a heartbeat, you normally see the price start to jump and we can see even after market now, she is still pushing up and climbing. Now, a lot of times you'll see the price drop right to the 200 haul and she gets smacked and she goes through every single MA, including the 200 haul. She'll go to it and through it way up. Now that's not going to be the first initial run. That's going to be the first breakthrough. Take that as a gain. Get out. Wait for it to come back down. She's going to probably jump up and down on that 200, make it real flat and solid, and then she'll start to climb again. So this is breaking out right now with all the signals in place. Everything is looking good. Volume is starting to come into the picture. Our oscillators are looking pretty good. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, is climbing. Let's zoom in on that MACD. Can't see a whole lot as flat as it is. Yes, that is climbing. Our green bars are consecutively getting bigger and bigger. And our RSI is in the overbought. We're on fire here, folks. We're at 73.5. And I like that. Overbought to me is good. When you're looking for imminent move, you need heat. So don't let overbought scare you and think, I need to get out now because it's going to fall. Well, yeah, sooner or later, it's going to come out of overbought. But how long is the question? This overbought, it was there all day. It's been red all day. So, you know, you'd only cheat yourself if you were running from overbought. So the four hour chart is looking sweet. Let's come on down to our 20 day, one hour view. We've got our downtrend, had a bounce off of the 200 haul here from 50 cents up to 77 cents. That was over 50%. Came back down underneath the 200 as we would expect because it's still falling. You don't break out on a falling 200. You break out when it starts to go flat. Right now, she is just starting to turn up. Right in this region is when she started to go flat. When did we have our breakout? Well, she got up on top and she's hanging around the 200 here, fell down to the 200 hall and jumped. And right now, our 200 MA is flat and we have gone from 47 cents up to 70 cents, falling back to just the nine day MA, floating on that, riding on up. This is looking really sweet, folks. All of our other MAs, our 200 haul, our 50 and our 20 are all evenly spaced and combed. Coming up over that 200, each one of those has its own current. But when all the currents are going in the same direction, it is a strong current. And what moves on that current, that price, that Dixie cup, it goes right with it. And everything is looking really strong. Volume was good today. Look at that PPO climbing strong. Our MACD is climbing strong and our RSI on the hourly chart is still in the overbought up there at 71. I'm liking that. Take a look at our five day, five minute. We had a pop here through the 200 when it was still kind of falling, hit a low bubble, came back up to her 50 and slowly worked her way over the 200. Once she got over the 200, she bounced on it quite a few times. And then right here, she took off all of our MAs. Look right there. All of our MAs were pushing downhill. And right when she jumped, she ripped them. She bent every single one of them. And they are all climbing now. And the nice thing is, is that she slowed down right here. We needed this drop. That drop put us back in the game. Look at how it brought that 20 right up underneath her. So they're all nice and tight and close again. So she can continue her climb without being dangerously too far away from anything. This is looking very, very good. Oscillators. Our PPO is still climbing. MACD. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. Well, I can if I get the right button. I hate having to change buttons over and over again. I need an AI to help me. Let's see here. Yes, we have a crossover right now happening after hours. She is getting on top of that line and starting to climb. That is great. 
RSI has cooled down a little bit, but we are still high up there at 63. I don't want to see it any less than 55. So 63 is nice. And this chart is looking good, folks. Every single chart has heat. Every single chart is climbing. And the four-hour chart is a breakout. And when you break out over the four-hour chart, you normally see a lot of strength pour into the company. I'm expecting some huge jumps and bounces off of this like we seen when she was falling. If she could do that when she had a negative situation, what do you think is going to happen when she has a positive situation? I'd be putting BSFC on my watch list right now and I would be watching for it. And remember, we're normally looking for stocks that have high volume. That's always a good, good key. You, you need volume to get it to move. Or do you? This stock is showing us I can move with very little volume. So I would just watch the chart. Make sure she isn't climbing on little volume. You don't want to miss out on any big rips just because there wasn't a volume rip. So I like BSFC. Now, I didn't cover everything. You may find more information out there than I even knew existed. Some deals, maybe something bad. You never know because I'm only glossing over it. So please, do your own due diligence. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.